welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about an 1821 wheel set that I just received from Milk Racing. Typically I run a 1619 on my bike, but I wanted to give the 1821 a try and give you guys my opinion on what that is. So stay tuned and I'll get those unboxed, put on and do some testing. Look at that. Well, those are some wheels and tires. That's beefy. Looking forward to seeing this on the bike. I mean, they look massive, so um, that's a little concerning to me, but all right, now that we got them unboxed, we're gonna get them put on the bike over here. Uh, when your guys are taking off these tires, it's always a better idea to take off the calipers. Just undo these screws, take this whole caliper off and let it hang. It's a much easier way to get on and off the forks and the and the swing arm. I'm gonna weigh this 16 inch rear wheel on this scale. It's not a great scale, but it'll work. And uh, we'll see what this difference is between the 18 inch rear. So let's give it a go. 16.4 pounds. All right, we got the rotor on. We got the 58 tooth sprocket. Since it's a bigger radius tire and I want similar gearing, that was the stock 48 that was on there. So a 58 on this 18 should be pretty close. So let's see what we weigh here. 19.4. So if you guys recall, when I first got the 1619 set up, I did buy that 40 or 58 tooth sprocket and it was a huge mistake way too high of gearing for such a small wheel i think 58 is probably okay for a 19 inch tire if that's what you have on the rear but it's still probably will be pretty low gearing but another problem i had was i bought a non o-ring chain and that really sucked so i've been skeptical on putting that sprocket on any of the bikes like even my other Saron that has you know 19 inch rear so what i ended up doing is i got this this niche chain, this is an X-Ring 420 chain and uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. So yeah, it's not a non-O-Ring and it doesn't, it definitely has a little bit more friction than a non-O-Ring chain, but it's supposed to be a lot better than an O-Ring. Here it says two times longer life than an O-Ring, less friction than an O-Ring. So somewhere in the middle between a non-O-Ring chain and an O-Ring chain. That's what I'm gonna run on this. I'm running this 58 tooth because I, like I said, the gearing on a bigger wheel, you want it to be a bigger sprocket so that you can get that same amount of torque or else you're just gonna not have that torque. So we're gonna get that set up and put that chain on. I hope to God that chain fits. So let's get it done. All right, we got the rear tire on. Funny thing is I thought something was wrong. It was making a weird noise and it turned out the, the kickstand was rubbing on the knobs. So I was gonna have to take the kickstand off anyway. It's too short with this wheel set. So you gotta get a replacement kickstand and I forgot to order one. So I've, I gotta wait for that, but just note that that won't work. Also, I don't have to shave knobs because Milk Racing dished it to the side for me. So what that means is if you tighten the spokes in a certain order, the hub will actually travel to one side. So by doing that, the chain, as you can see there, is not going to rub on the on the knobbies and i didn't have to cut any of these down so we're looking good it's just dished to the left it was the same with my 16 flow wheels did that one and they dished it so that i didn't have to cut knobs i don't want to sacrifice that kind of traction and i'm okay with it being a little offset inside that swing arm that's not that big a deal to me so we're good now let's weigh the front tire from the stock Suron. Well, actually this isn't I mean stock, but this is the weight difference. This tire is that Kenda Millville 2 and it's on the stock rim. So we'll weigh it with the, the rotor on there and see what it looks like. 10.8 pounds. All right, we'll see what the new one is. All right, got the rotor on. And as you can see with these milk racing wheels, they do have rim locks. You can always tell if you have a rim lock if there's a, a screw aside from the, the thing. So there's a a piece in here that clamps the tire into the wheel so that the, the, the tire doesn't spin on the rim and uh, that prevents getting flats from shearing off your valve stem so rim locks are important for that kind of stuff you can run really low tire pressure 
when you have rim locks because it won't slip around. All right, let's get the weight. 15.2, definitely a lot heavier all around. So I'll put the numbers up here for both tires um, so that you can see the weight differences. So yeah, I don't recommend going to 1821 unless you have a power upgrade. Obviously I have a chai battery and a co-controller and I can push, you know, 15 to 22 kilowatts. So I can up my phase amps and, and make it work. So we'll be good. All right, so we got the wheels on. Gonna do an initial ride and see what I think. And then we'll do some, some trail riding or some harder terrain to get a feel for it. So anyway, looking good. I like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of the, the color combo. I know it's a personal preference, but I like the white. I like the white and red and black. So anyway, let's get on a ride. Again, I apologize for the wind. I feel like kind of taking it down this steep hill and seeing what we got. Let's see it. They feel really good. If I only had the suspension to help. Yeah, that's steep. That's steep. Nice. That was fun. So anyway, I decided to do a bigger wheel set just because I wanted to give it a try and give you guys my opinion of it, see what I think. So I've been kind of a, a proponent of the 1619. I really do like it. I think it's great. I'm going to put it on my other Suron. My son will mostly use it, but you know, I, it's not to waste. I just think that I kind of wanted to see what all the fuss was about with the 1821. And I feel like, you know, it's definitely a personal preference. I think that most people would be just fine with the 1619. In fact, I honestly think that the bike geometry for a Suron looks better with 1619 because these kind of look kind of big on this bike since it's so small i think with a bigger front fork it would look a lot better but um yeah my opinion is that for looks definitely 1619 look cooler for function this would definitely be better for enduro riding or trails with rocky terrain and stuff i wonder if we can climb that let's give it a go That was fun. That's not a tiny hill. That's kind of cool. So yeah, for you guys looking, I mean, I bought these from Milk Racing and uh, I bought them actually Black Friday weekend. They were having a sale and I paid a lot less than, than normal, but I literally just barely got them. That is five months. And they kind of state that they would take definitely some time, like six to eight weeks of assembly and then shipping after that. But we're talking four to five months. So that's uh, something you need to consider too. Well, I made it up this rocky road and it's, well, not this trail, back over there. But so far, you know, my review would be like, I'm really liking the tires. I'm loving the wheels. The size is good. My biggest problem right now is this front suspension is just bad. So I'm looking to change. I'm not sure I'm willing to drop so much money for like an EXT fork. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking for good options, you know, maybe the Fast Ace 2.0 or these new improved KKEs, but uh, we'll see. But that might be the next thing I do other than like a kickstand. I have to get a kickstand, so let's see. So yeah, enjoy the rest of the video if I put anything out here because I'm not sure I will, but I'll just, I'm gonna ride around and just enjoy this stuff.
just off the side of the road here. And <laughs> Utah laws. You just shoot pretty much almost anywhere, I feel like. Not really, but there's a gun range not far along. But people don't want to pay the money for it. So they pull up into one of those little nooks, start shooting. And there's big rocks back there, so I would have, I'd be afraid of ricochet or something, but that's me. A uh, different nook, different people. Shit. Look at that shark fin. Someone's got some balls. That has definitely been hit. Ah, there's a big gap to it. These guys are crazy. Another shark fin right here to that. And a little shark fin right there to this one. Someone is having fun. All right, that is ballsy. Oh, wow. <laughs> These guys are not messing around, I'm telling you. That's a big gap. You're getting hurt if you don't make that one. This guy's crazy. Landing into this. Come around with that. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna wrap up the video on this point, but uh, heading back down, it's a testament to my Chai Vet battery. I rode all the way from down the valley up into the mountains. I've been playing up here for probably an hour and a half. I'm still at 76%. So, I mean, we're talking down there, like, I can't think of how many miles that probably is, but I would say seven miles to get here. And I've been playing around after that for a good hour, hour and a half. 76%. So anyway, if you like the video, as always, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, I, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button if you like my content. Just trying to provide some information to everybody and some good writing. And other than that, we'll see you on the next video. Keep the rubber side down.